Hi there, this is Introduction to Vectors, and I'm just going to walk you through a few examples. These are usually pretty fun, but uh, let's start off. Uh, if the ring is in a state of equilibrium, and remember that means uh, all the forces, when they add up, that equals zero, um, then what is the third force uh, in vector form? And then also they want to know what the magnitude is. Well, what we can do is we can find the resultant force of both this 10 and 5 pounds and then we can just multiply it by negative 1 or, or invert it or not invert it but multiply it by negative 1 so that uh, we know exactly what would counteract those two forces so what I want you to do is realize that we're gonna have a force here this will be negative r, and our resultant force, r, will be there. Now, we don't know the exact angle yet, but I just wanted to show you it, it, that it is there. And r is going to equal, if we use this, x, y axis, this be 5i minus 10j. Well, all we need to do is we, we know that r uh, essentially plus a, a negative r equals zero. So we just have to find what negative r is. In negative r we just multiply it by negative one, right? So this will be negative 5i plus 10j. And that's what the third force would have to be. That's what this force would have to be, this one right here, on the upper left. Now, what's the magnitude of it? We just use the Pythagorean theorem. And you find that the magnitude of r, well, actually negative r, because we wanted to know That's the third force, right? So, using the Pythagorean theorem, we will have negative 5 squared plus 10 squared, which will equal, that will equal 11.18 pounds. And that's how we'll we'll balance that ring out so that it won't be moving and be in a state of equilibrium. Well, let's move down to this one. Um, essentially, you got this little guy which I'm going to call Dave, and Dave is putting up the Christmas tree lights, and uh, he did it the wrong way. He uh, started from the bottom and worked his way to the top and now he realizes that he can't reach the plug and he's trying to pull so essentially what uh, I, I just wanted to find out is what what's the the vector that's occurring at t so what's the vector at t and you get that basically from the geometry of the problem you can kinda of see that we have uh, you know, 15 over here and, and 8 down. So that's essentially, since it's already kind of broken up into the components, you can kind of see that that's what that would be. It would be 15 to the right and 8 down, just based off of the geometry. He's 15 feet away, he's 8 down. You have this triangle already, so you can utilize that. Um, and I wanted to ask you, well, how, how would you determine what this alpha is? How do you determine that? And what you need to do is you just need to break it down into your trig functions again that you did in algebra, and you realize that, you know, hey, tan, uh, al tan alpha is going to actually equal 8 over 15, just based off the geometry, once again. 
So if you wanted to get alpha, you would do inverse tan of 8 over 15, which that would equal 28.07 degrees. And if you just think about the point T, the angle, the vector is this way, the rope is pulling this way. So, look at this all as tree. So the vector is pulling this way, and you can kind of see that this would be 15 over 8. It's just like the angle that you're working at. So, um, yeah, the, you'll notice that uh, you get really elaborate pictures, but a lot of the time you can simplify it almost in your head as, well, that should just be a triangle. And that's really all that is, that situation. Uh, let's finish up down here. Uh, what's the resultant force of these three vectors? Um, basically, what I want you to do is I want you to break it down into components. Into components. Right? So, don't forget that, that just means x and y. x, y. Great. So, let's just look at x. Just only look at x because we have to make sure we don't get overwhelmed here. And what you can see is that, uh, first of all, you have your magnitude of 30, but then it's cosine of 180 degrees. Okay, so plus. Then you have your second vector, 20 pounds, at the cosine of 40 degrees. And finally, the last one is 5 pounds at the cosine of 30 degrees. Well, if you figured all that out, it would be negative 30 plus 15.32 and plus 4.33 which all comes down to negative 10.35-ish. Okay, well that's the x direction. What about the y? Well, you take the magnitude. Essentially, all you're going to do different in this one is rather than using cosine, you're going to use sine. And that's just using... That's just from your trig classes from way back when. And plus 5 sine 30. Okay? Well, we work out that math again. You're going to get 0 because sine of 180 is 0. Plus 12.86 minus 2.5. Why is it minus? Well, because this is actually not 30, it's below, so this is actually negative 30. So I should have put negative 30 degrees, right, in this equation. So negative 30, negative 30. And so basically, what that equals is 10.36 pounds. Hey! So essentially, you're resultant force will equal negative 10.35i plus 10.36j. Pretty simple, but uh, you just have to make sure you don't make any small errors or um, just lazy errors, I'll call them. So anyway, uh, basically arithmetic, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Um, I'm going to be doing some engineering examples, and also I'll do a 3D example as well.